So Game Porting Toolkit 2.0 Beta 3 has just been released, and it's now available to use to play all of those big new AAA Windows games on Mac better than ever. Unfortunately, as is the Apple way with Game Porting Toolkit, we have zero patch notes, so we have to kind of feel around and figure out ourselves what kind of changes and improvements have been made, if there are any at all. And today we're going to be talking about how to upgrade to version 2.0 Beta 3 in the first place, so that we can demonstrate some of the newest Windows games that now work on a Mac, including Space Marine 2, Black Myth Wukong, Horizon Forbidden West, and the latest FSR 3 frame generation update to Cyberpunk 2077. So the first thing that we should talk about is what is the best way to get the latest version of Game Porting Toolkit? Well, just now the latest crossover preview has just been announced, which bundles the latest D3D Metal 2.0 Beta 3 into this release. However, this requires an active Crossover Plus license. Luckily, there's still one more day left on their 25% off discount if you click the link at the top of the description. But if you're watching this in the future, you can still use the coupon code Apple Gaming Wiki New for a 20% discount. Every purchase made after following these links help to support this channel and the content that I create. And if you want to use the standard crossover release or just to trial crossover in the first place, you can use an unofficial third party tool called CX Patcher to upgrade D3D Metal from 2.0 Beta 1 to Beta 3 and test out the new release. I'll leave a link in the description for my tutorial video on how to do this. Firstly, let's take a look at Black Myth Wukong. So one of the benefits of running this through Beta 3 is that there's reportedly superior performance compared to Beta 1 and Beta 2. Just bear in mind the game won't render correctly if you're using an M1 generation chip. At the very minimum, I recommend using an M2 Pro, which has at least 18 gigabytes of RAM. You can see in this game, this has already used up nearly 19 gigabytes. You really need your Mac to have as much RAM as possible. So when you start a new game, you're gonna be faced with this section where there are huge gods and a big army rendered in the background, and the frame rate isn't gonna be particularly good. It's only going to run about 25 to 35 FPS at 1080p on an M3 Max chip. This is not great for what is the most powerful Mac that you can buy, but thankfully this is not indicative of performance within the game itself. When we're actually doing normal combat, fighting bosses, etc, I'm actually going to get nearly double the frame rate of that intro sequence. So don't be too put off if your performance isn't that good, especially at the beginning, because when you're actually playing and when it actually matters, the game's performance isn't too bad. There isn't a significant amount of stutter, which is surprising because this is quite a graphic intense game and we're running through so many different translation layers. Also another thing is that you can obviously use a controller with this game. So I've got my Xbox Series X wireless controller paired by Bluetooth onto macOS and it's pretty much automatically detected by the game. If you're looking for a point of comparison, the actual benchmark itself running at these settings runs pretty well. We're getting a score of 44 FPS which isn't too bad. There are also other settings like frame generation which you can tweak. I haven't actually played around with this that much because I wanted to show you what the raw performance of the game look like without AI frame generation tools. Frame generation can also increase input lag as well, so you might not want to use it in a game like this. Next, we're looking at Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. So generally speaking, Space Marine 2 works great on the Apple Silicon Mac. There are no significant graphical artifacts or stutters, which is fantastic because this is another great looking game from 2024. So yes, I am playing this on the MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip, pretty much the most powerful Mac that you can play on today. However, I also tested the game on my M1 Max chip. This laptop Laptop's now nearly three years old. Turn the graphics preset to low and FSR is set to quality mode. And we're getting decent performance hovering between the 25 to 35 FPS mark. Also found that multiplayer does actually work. So this is despite the fact that we were getting errors installing the Epic online services. I was even able to match make cross platform and play with Xbox players. As far as I could tell, multiplayer worked smoothly. There were no synchronization issues or frame rate issues. I'm pretty confident that you could play an entire multiplayer campaign through crossover on a Mac. So we just have really one minor annoyance, which is the fact that sometimes the mouse cursor appears on screen. I haven't figured a way to get rid of this. Let me know in the comments if you find a fix. Also the fact that we can't use a controller right now is a little bit annoying, but keyboard and mouse is obviously better for shooter games. Next, we're looking at Cyberpunk 2077, which recently released an FSR 3 update, which included the option for frame generation. So frame generation, if you didn't already know about it, basically uses algorithms and AI in order to insert frames generated between the ones created by your GPU. And it's basically helps achieve higher frame rates without taking up too much additional GPU power. Previously I made a video about how we could achieve this in Cyberpunk 2077 using a mod, but now the frame generation setting is baked into the game and the results speak for themselves. The game is running at nearly double the speed. However, just be aware that frame generation can introduce latency as well. So Cyberpunk 2077 still remains one of the most impressive titles that you can run through crossover and game porting toolkits D3D Metal. A lot of issues with 1.0 and previous versions of the beta 
data have been resolved. For example, the black screen bug with FSR. And this means that there's never been a better time to jump into Cyberpunk 2077 on a Mac using the latest version of D3D Metal. Lastly, we're looking at the game Horizon Forbidden West. So this is another AAA title that released on Windows PC this year. So I've covered this running on Game 14 Toolkit 2 in a previous video, and that required downgrading the game. However, I'm now able to play this game using a brand new F16C patch provided by user Vladimir Prog. And this means that I can use the current Steam version of the game. And all I have to do is replace the EXE with the F16C patch. What I'm going to do is do a tutorial video on this in the future. I'll leave a link to the patch in the description. And one of the main benefits of using the latest versions of all of these patches is the fact that facial animations and cutscenes now render correctly and the dialogue is all properly lip synced. We also have very decent support for controllers pretty much out of the box. Just pair your controller to macOS and the game will pick it up. Unfortunately, I can't recommend playing this game on a Mac at the moment, and that's because of stability issues that I've been encountering. For example, here the game just froze with this white screen, and this happened more than once. And this is a shame because the rest of the game is basically fully playable. My hope is that a fix is going to be found and developed in the future. So anyway, that's my overview of D2D Metal 2.0 Beta 3. I'm sorry that I don't have specific information because this has just come out and we don't have any patch notes. It's hard to know exactly what has changed, but it is good to know that many of these AAA games are now playable on the Mac. Anyway, if you manage to discover anything new, please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.